Hey everyone, Works here. So we did the beginner's guide in patch 9.0. Now that we're in patch 9.1, we're gonna be looking at a more intermediates guide and kind of update information from our beginner's guide that we did in patch 9.0. So in this video, we're not gonna take a look at all of the abilities and talk about how they work and how they interact with each other as we did in the beginner's guide. At this point, I'm assuming that you have a baseline understanding of how each ability works and how they sort of involve and interact with each other and what synergies are there. So in this video, we're gonna be looking more at advanced concepts. So we're gonna talk about maybe some higher level thinking in the talent trees. We're gonna be talking about uh, updates to the legendaries, the covenants, the soul binds, and other items that I consider now outdated in the beginner's guide. Beginner guide still functions pretty well though. If you are a new Mistweaver monk, you can still use the beginner's guide as a jumping off point for where you need to, where you need to be in order to get started with the, uh, with the spec itself. Um, but if you've played Mist Reaver for a little bit and are just wondering about the changes and how does that impact your playstyle, hopefully this video is the one that you need. So let's kick this video off. I've already got it up here. Let's start with talents. So if I recall correctly, this is the build that I recommended in patch 9.0. And for the most part, that hasn't changed. Uh, the 25 row with Celerity, Chi Torpedo, and Tiger's Lust is still completely free to you to choose. Again, I picked Tiger's Lust because it has the most flexibility. T Torpedo good for long bursts. You might use it in a dungeon like the other side where there's a lot of running back um, that doesn't teleport you and things like that. Um, but for the most part, talent build stays the same. You can use Chi Burst if you want a little bit more aggressive in terms of damage playstyle. This is also good on bosses that have large hitboxes. So think any raid boss where you're standing opposite your tank. That tank might be 20, 30 yards away. Chi Burst allows you to hit the boss and still hit your tank and do a little bit of extra healing. Uh, in those cases. But for the most part, I think this talent build right here still holds pretty true. Uh, I did run with the Mystery River Monk that was running, say, Jade Serpent Statue, which worked out well for him, but it was basically a pure healing output build, and he did like 200 damage the entire instance, it felt like. He barely did any at all. Not that he had to. I was the Mystic Touch applicator, so he could just kind of stand back and do whatever, but um, TG is still pretty much the best one because it does give you that um, that time to do offensive damage output and also still heal your group in a pretty effective way. Um, overall, like I said, build I don't think has changed. In fact, I think this build here has become even more solidified as the build to go to with the damage buffs that Mystery forgot in patch 9.1, making GG and Rising Mists even more so solid as the by far and away the top talents. Upwelling builds, you can still see them every now and then, now and again, but for the most part, I think those builds are for the most part dead. You might see some folks running Focus Thunder. Uh, it's very popular in PvP for a lot of reasons, but uh, in PvE situations, you're going to see pretty much Rising Mist across the board, bar none. All right, now we're going to move on and talk about your legendaries. So in the beginner's guide, we talked about Tier of Mourning and the ancient teachings in the monastery and kind of how they were kind of built and designed around the pillars of playstyle, tier of mourning for a more caster based build, ancient teachings for the more fist weaving aggressive style build. Now that said, these two legendaries are still two of the best that you can get. Uh, tier of the mourning actually does work well with the fist weaving playstyle now because it does make your cleave healing even better and it makes your burst healing even better getting that chance to spread renewing mist to other targets, um, you know, getting that cleave healing on, on enveloping mist and revivify uh, instead of just on revivify makes this really, really strong for group healing and is uh, one of the better ones in Mythic Plus. In fact, uh, most guides that you see on Peak of Serenity on Wildhead will actually recommend Tier of Mourning for Mythic Plus purposes and Ancient Teachings for uh, raid purposes where you need a lot more single target burst healing and that's kind of what ancient teachings thrives in is that single target healing um, either way you can pick either of these legendaries they're very close to each other in terms of output um, nothing's really changed with these legendaries in fact ancient teachings kind of got a passive indirect buff with the damage buffs that Nate, that mystery ever got so this legendary is the one i use right now um, and it is the one that i would definitely recommend that you probably craft first but if you're not a fan of a super aggressive DPS output mystery style of play, Tier of Morning is a very good backup option for you. Uh, or if you are Kyrian, oh wait, I did turn mine in. Where is it at? Right here, I haven't turned it in yet. Or if you're Kyrian, you can also use Call to Arms. Uh, basically, when you use Weapons of Order, you call forth Chi-G 
uh, or Yulon if you're not talented into TG for 12 seconds. Uh, it has the full abilities that you do when you would use your normal three minute cooldown. So this gives you a lot more TG uptime, which gives you a lot more damage output and a lot more burst healing. You get the instant cast enveloping mists and get more of those out because you're going to have, you know, 12 seconds on the uh, weapons of order call out and then you get, uh, let's see. It doesn't say how long. I think it's 30 seconds on regular TG. So you're talking about 42 seconds for the cost of a three minute cooldown and a two minute cooldown of weapons of order. So not bad uh, that you can desync from. Uh, now, sometimes you don't want to do that. You want to try to have both of them up, which means this legendary loses value in that case. But um, if you are Kyrian, this one is going to be very good in Mythic Plus, but may not be all that good in raid situations compared to say like ancient teachings it's something that you'll have to play with and test with um, but the fact that you have three legendaries that are all very good with invokers to like quietly being another good one kind of like a, a very good backup if you haven't gotten any of these other ones for whatever reason you can just go with invokers delight and you're going to be in a, a pretty good spot all right, now let's talk where to craft these legendaries. With the Shards of Domination system, making it so that five of your slots are going to be what we call Domination Gear, where you can use the Shards of Domination, it required that some legendaries be moved around or be able to be crafted in different slots. Now for Leather Wearers, you wanna use it on, you'll get, you get head, shoulder, and chest by default, and then each spot gets two other slots where it's gonna be useful. I think for Leather, it's hands and I think feet. Um, don't quote me on that 100%. I'd have to double check. But either way, it means that Ancient Teachings of the Monastery now moves to being a wrist slot. Tear of Mourning now moves to being a waist slot. And Call to Arms you'll use in the leg slot. So for these three legendaries, whichever you choose to use, you want to make sure that you recraft them. Recrafting is annoying, absolutely. As you can see here with my Soul Ash tooltip, you know, I'm still working on being able to get up to the rank six with the Cinders. Uh, just basically another week of Torghast and I'll have enough cinders for rank six and then I'll need the gold for it. But, you know, the good thing is, is that you get the legendary socket basically immediately, or you get the socket on it immediately. So you gain some stat value out of it or you don't lose any if you already had a socket in your legendary. Plus you get the, you know, rank six version, the 262 eye level or 249. If you think, you, if you don't think you're ever going to craft a uh, a rank six, you can just go for rank five at 249 eye level, which is probably going to be cheaper on your gold. Um, if your servers like mine, the rank sixes are running 250 to 750,000 gold right now. And as you can see by my stuff, I have 94,000 gold across all of my characters. I am not a rich wild player. Um, you know, so, you know, rank five, rank six, whichever you feel like you can afford, it completely up to you in that case. Um, I've debated the idea of going to rank 5 just so that I can get the upgraded legendary and, and move on with my life, but I'm going to wait to see if prices drop on the rank 6s. So again, depending on your server economy, you might be able to go ahead and afford that and of course your own gold. Um, but yeah, definitely try to craft again in the waist, if you're carrying in the legs if you want to go for that one, or in the wrist slot. Alright. Since we mentioned the Shards of Domination, let's talk about those. They come out, of course, the Sanctum of Domination Raid, and they're the new consumable, essentially, for this patch. Now, for healing, you want, in terms of the set bonus, if you're a raiding Mistweaver, you want to chase the Unholy set bonus, just like DPS does. Chaos Bane, which is the three-piece Unholy bonus, provides a big intellect boost, which is always going to be good. Always going to be powerful for Mistweaver monks. Uh, and so anytime you can get an intellect boost, you want to try to do what you can to get them. So the extra damage upon reaching the 15 stacks with the Chaos Bane is uh, just kind of icing on the cake, but you also get a surge of intellect out of it as well. So it's just a really, really good set bonus that provides a lot of primary stat, which all healers thrive off of. And pretty much all specs really like having is primary stat. So it's a good, very, very good bonus. So you want to go get the three unholy shards, so Zed, Diz, and Oth, O-T-H, for the priority unholy set bonus. And then if you're rounding out your five piece, then Tell and Kier are two frost runes options that'll round out your set quite nicely with some uh, more well-rounded stats, slightly more defensive purposes, but uh, we'll give you that 
ability to hopefully maintain your own health bar as much as possible while you're raising up that of the DPS that are standing and shit, because that's what they do. Now, if you're a Mythic Plus player only and you're just going after the Shards of Domination because you know that they're a good, strong increase for your set bonus, then, and you know, obviously you don't care about the Unholy set bonus, then you definitely want to go chase these five shards, probably in this order, but just at any time you can get these five. Zed, Tell, Kier, Rev, and Diz. All right, so those are the five that you want to go get out of the shards. Uh, you can look up on Wildhead or Icy Veins, whichever is your chosen database website, to find out uh, where to get those and where they drop and who they drop off of. Drop off of. So, all right. Now we're going to talk about. Well, we're going to start talking about covenants and soulbinds, but I'm going to work my way to my forge of bonds here in beautiful Elysian Hold. So while I'm doing work, working my way over there, guys, I just want to take a moment to remind you to like, share, and subscribe to the video. Um, I've gotten a surge of subscribers recently. I think I've gotten seven or eight, which is a big number for me. And I just want to take a moment and thank all of you guys that have subscribed to the channel recently. It's put a smile on my face every single time. And uh, I told my wife that I've gotten a few new subscribers and she was really happy for me as well, which is always good when your significant others are invested in it as well. So thank you guys so much for your subscribers. You can tell I'm just getting really happy thinking about the fact that you guys are supporting me in what I do. So. Uh, thank you very much, and for those of you that haven't, please do so. It's free to you. It doesn't cost you anything. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about the Covenants, Conduits, Soulbinds. So for Covenants, uh, generally speaking, the Mistweaver Monk is in an interesting position because the quote-unquote best ones are Necrolord if you're a Raider and Kyrian if you're a Mythic Plusser. Now the interesting thing is, is that actually all four Covenants are pretty close in terms of healing output, utility, defensive... Uh, value all four of them are actually really good yes even you three venthyr monks can be good mistweavers playing venthyr so you can really just pick any of these and play what you want and it's not going to be an issue at all uh, so if you have an aesthetic that you prefer like me i like the kyrian aesthetics so i'm going to be kyrian i like the necrolord aesthetics i've debated back and forth probably umpteen thousand times if i'm going to actually go necrolord so if you like Night Fair, you like Venthyr, and you just want to play that, you can play that. And you will effectively like triple the population of Venthyr monks. So cool for you if you pick them. All right. So let's talk about the conduits themselves. So because of the changes that have happened in patch 9.1, there's been a little bit of change in terms of what is good for Mistweaver Monk. I think initially I recommended Jade Bond uh, with Resplendent Mist as kind of your two best options, Jade Bond kind of fallen away a little bit by the wayside resplendent mist still extremely good and now actually the number one one well, number one socket you want to try to get um so just big bonus in your healing whenever you get your gust of mist proc so just is a very strong hps output and then you also want to look at rising sun revival so rising, rising sun revival uh you know gives you cdr on revival when you're using rising sun kick and you basically give 17.5% of a of revival's burst healing as a hot over 10 seconds. So it just makes it one of the absolute strongest raid-wide he healing output cooldowns. Probably right there with Holy Word Salvation from the Holy Priests. Because revival now is also on your mastery, this conduit has gotten a lot of val lot more valuable. And so generally speaking, you want to put that into your second slot. Uh, as you can see, I had these a little bit backwards, but whatever. Um, if you get a third potency slot, which I do not hear in this particular tree, then your choices are going to vary a little bit depending on A, your covenant, and B, like what you have available to you. So if you are a Necrolord or a Venthyr, you want to use your covenant, Bone Marrow Hops, and Imbued Reflections accordingly. If you are a uh, Night Fae or a Kyrian, you want to use either Jade Bond. You could also use Adaptive Armor Fragment, um, which gives you you know, intellect when you're healed by someone else that one not very good for mythic plus but potentially good for raid so for mythic plus you would definitely want to use jade bond so just so you can get more chiji uptime and you get that increase to your gust of meal gust of healing or gust of mist healing rather so uh so third potency slot for mythic plus jade bond for raid adaptive armor fragment not, might not be bad uh, of a choice uh, you just kind of want to go with maybe whichever one you have at a higher eye level they're the same for me so as a mythic plus player primarily be picking, I'd be picking Jade Bond if I got a third potency conduit. Now let's look at Soulbinds. So for Soulbinds, obviously I'm Kyrian, so we're going to go ahead and look at Kyrian. Best one here, obviously, you can see is Clea. 
Valiant Strikes, just getting that crit chance is going to be really good. Pointed Courage, uh, getting that in increased crit percent chance. And then a couple of the bottom talents are really good. So Spear of the Archon, giving you extra movement speed outside of combat. And then you gain 3% critical strike for 10 seconds while damaging an enemy above 90% health. So just a little bit of uh, extra crit right off the start. So if you are summoning GG and you go in, all your stuff is going to be a little bit better in the crit area. Not a bad one at all. A Hope Springs Eternal. There has been some uh, pickiness about actually being able to use this to remove necrotic things like necrotic stacks or bleeds from your tank if they are not Kyrian. Um, so this has potential if that interaction isn't fixed or is can deemed to be like something that you do so like my brother is a night fae and it, as a tank if he's got high necrotic stacks i can switch over to this particular um ability and i can when he starts running you know when he tells me hey i've got 15 16 17 necrotic stacks if he's the lowest health ally then i can give him this and he gets the little bit of heal from file and he gets the bonuses of being able to clear his necrotic stacks there's a thread on reddit about it uh, i'll see if i can maybe link it in the description below um, but something that has potential, assuming it's not a bug. And then of course the bottom one, Light the Path, Valiant Strikes gains another quarter percent critical strike chance per stack, and when your Valiant Strikes heal an ally, you each gain 5% critical strike for 15 seconds, so uh, giving crit buff to other, other specs, depending on the spec, this could be really, really good or not all that valuable. Um, if the spec likes crit, Elemental Shaman, Feral Druid are the two that come to mind immediately. Then it'll be really good if it's not a big fan of crit so what moonkin then it's not going to be as useful but it is still a dps buff for the other player regardless and you get that at renown 54. all right so for necrolord and you want a many um the first ability giving you 13 percent intellect whenever you use bone dust brew is still incredibly strong and with bone dust brew being a pretty short cooldown i think it's only a minute uh, you're going to be using that ability often and so you'll get a big surge of intellect about every minute or so which is going to be very, very good. Uh, for Night Fae, you want either Naya or Dreamweaver. They're both acceptable, just depending on if you off-spec one or the other. If you're like a Windwalker uh, off-spec, then you'll be using Naya for Windwalker. And so Dreamweaver's kind of built the best for healing. Um, going down that route, you get that little bit of extra haste to feel the blossoms, which isn't bad, especially if you're fist weaving because you like haste as a fist weaver. And then for Venthyr, actually all three are good, but General Draven tends to have the best mix of offensive and defensive util and, and utility value. So you can do really any three of them. Again, if you're off specking, um, I think the other two specs really like Nadja. So having the choice of either Theotar or Draven is going to be quite good. Uh, Draven tends to be less positionally restrictful since Theotar has the umbrellas, but it doesn't follow you. It just plops in the earth and you have to stay there. So Draven gives you the best mix and gives you some good uh, intellect and uh, offensive and defensive value if you are standing still too. So go from there. Now in Mythic Plus, let me see if this is, yeah, there it is. So let me just grab, you know, we'll just grab Halls because this is the one that I, I know. So you can see here, we have each of these Lieutenant mobs that are out here. There's one there. Uh, one is back here. Uh, that's Echelon. You know what? Not halls. Let's do mists. It's easier in mists. So dungeon level 10. So you have Incinerator, Oros this week, and then there's one just beyond here with Sagadon, and then there's one right before Execution of Aruth this week. So each of these guys are going to give you an anima power. Uh, for healers, uh, for Sagadon the Breaker, which is this week he's down here, you want to grab the Stone Ward, which gives you just a big absorb shield. Uh, for Incinerator, who is right here this week, you want to get uh, Utter Hubris if you're looking at more damage, where basically you deal a little bit more damage, but you also lose your health. Or you can choose Crumbling Bulwark, which is a flat versatility increase and gives you DR on in, upon entering a fight, which is a safe option if you want that. Uh, Oral's Cold Heart, gives you you want to use gavel, gavel of judgment which gives you like a, your auto attacks a chance to stun for two seconds oros's powers are just kind of uh, overall very weak you can honestly pick any of them and it's really not going to impact anything at all and then for execution of a ruth you want to choose chalice overflowing chalice for your mana sustain you can also choose the one that allows you to eat and drink faster i think both of those are perfectly fine and capable of being used so 
Uh, those are the four powers that you typically want to go chase as a Mystery River Monk in Mythic Plus. Um, but you can experiment and see if there's one that maybe feels like it works better for you. So what about the overall outlook of Mistweaver in this patch? So overall, I think Mistweaver is uh, really fun to play. Obviously, I love the healer. It's my favorite healer. But it is still seen as a meme by a lot of people in the community. Perception is hard to break after what happened to the spec in 9.0. That said, I think Mistweaver is uh, a really effective healer in all situations. It's kind of got something that it can do. You can be away from the pack and bomb heals if you need to be away from the pack for any reason. You can get in there and do decent damage. It's not Holy Paladin damage, but there are DPS that don't do Holy Paladin damage. So, I mean, it's not a fair comparison. Um, and its mana problems, I think, have been squashed. They've reduced a lot of mana costs in 9.05 as well as 9.1. And the both Prideful in Season 1 and now Tormented in Season 2 do offer ways to help healers sustain and kind of maintain mana. And with the Fist Weaving style of play, your mana costs are actually not nearly as bad as they are with a more Yulon focused play style where you're just spamming heals while Yulon is up. Because with GG you're doing damage while you're going, your mana consumption is a lot lower. Um, there's a lot of choice in how you build and play your Mistweaver through the legendaries with either Tier of Mourning, Ancient Teachings, or uh, or the uh, Call to Arms if you're Kyrian. Which is something that I don't think many other healers can say. I don't think, I mean, Paladin has things like Mad Paragon, Shock Barrier, and things like that. Um, but I don't, obviously I'm not that knowledgeable on other healers, but I don't think there's a much in the way of playstyle changes for others. Like, obviously Shaman can do the Earthquake always on, but I don't think really any other healers can say, look, I can pick this Legendary and it completely changes my style of play, or I can pick this Legendary and really focus on this style of healing. Uh, it's just a really cool thing through the Borrowed Power Systems. Overall, the spec is really solid, and if you invite one as a non Mistreaver player, if you're looking at this trying to see how good is the spec, if you invite one to your team, you know you're going to get high HPS output. If they're a Fist Weaver and pushing on that, you're going to get strong, uh, but not necessarily Paladin level DPS. You'll get really good DPS out of them. Most Mistreavers can, that play well can push between you know 1200 and 2200 DPS, which for a healer is not that bad at all. Uh, and they'll contribute you know, that noticeable damage to your comp, assuming you have someone that kind of knows what they're doing with the spec. Uh, I actually think Mistreaver might potentially even be undervalued by the community as a whole right now. Like I said, perception is hard to break, and so uh, the perception that the community has of the spec is gonna be what holds it back from being probably seen as a much better healer than what it is, but you know, hopefully it, with good play, you can help break those perceptions. Um, and there are some other issues, of course. It doesn't, you know, Holy Paladin is an issue for Mistweaver Monk. Even though Holy Paladin took some significant nurse, Holy Paladin is still doing everything that Holy Paladin wants to do and is still doing it better than any other healer on the block, which is why you saw anywhere between two to three of them, uh, potentially even four in the World First race. They're just, they're a huge problem for Blizzard right now. Um, if you want to give Mistreaver a try, I think you'll find it as a lot of fun, but because of the perception around the spec, expect it to possibly take you time to get into uh, a Mythic Plus group, or if you're pugging a normal raid, you know, going that route with it. So anyways, everyone, that's the Intermediate Guide for Patch 9.1 for Mistweaver Monk. Let me know in the comments if you think there's anything that I missed or have anything that you want to add to the information in this video. I'd love to hear from you. Um, up next, we're going to look into things like an updated UI video. I'll be looking at Season 2 routing. For, the, for those of you that are tanks, uh, as well as maybe potentially doing a survival hunter guide. I've been playing that spec a lot and some, uh, as a little bit of change of pace, and I found it a lot of fun, so I might do a guide on it. So until the next video, I hope you all stay safe. Please remember that today is always a great day to be alive, and I will see you next time.